You know, I can remember uh, a time in my life where, uh, like many of you, you came to a service or you had a friend or you came across somebody that would just share a story with you and would kind of lead you along the way and, and somehow, some way, you found who Jesus really was. It might have been a pastor. It could have been your best friend. It could have been a spouse. And all of a sudden, like they were singing about this morning, you know, your life is it's just changed. Instantly, miraculously, you feel something come through your body even. And, and you just know things are going to be different, right? And everything is, is going to be all right from now on. So as soon as I give my life over to God, things are going to be better. And I, I think that uh, that is the case when you do that with Christ. The problem that I found out was, is that I gave my life over to Christ, but not necessarily could I have sang that song with maybe even the same passion today as Rascal Flats when they, they, just, they, they were just changed completely and everything was different and, and everything was wonderful. It, it just, it just it wasn't that way for me. I, I remember that I changed my life in words, and I said, I said to people, I would tell everybody, you know, my life is changed. Everything is different about me. I, I serve God now, and, and the things that I've done in the past, the regrets that I had, those, those things have, have gone away. And so, even to the point where I, I remembered I took a position as a youth pastor in Dell City. And so everything should change, right? I mean, everything should change. I am a man of God. You know, I, have, I, I am uh, calling myself that. I am presenting myself as that. And so if I'm singing a song, it's a song of change. And if I'm preaching a message or if I'm talking, it's a message of change. I've been changed. I've been changed. There's something different about my life. There's something different with inside of me that, that has, has taken me away from what I used to do or what the world would call bad, and it's, it's changed me. Romans chapter 12, and I just want to read a couple of scriptures this morning. It says, Dear friends, God is good, so I beg you to offer your bodies to Him as a living sacrifice, pure and pleasing. That's what he wants for us. He, he, he's asking us, you know, that we just, we just live for him with everything we got. That's the most sensible way. It's the smartest way to serve God. He says, don't be like the people of this world, but let God change the way you think. And so it's natural for us, you know, to be fleshly. You know what that means? It's, it's natural for us to do things probably on the wrong side. You know, it's natural for us. We lean towards drama or we lean towards things being, uh, you know, not godly, I guess, is the best way to put it. It just seems like that's where our heart naturally goes. But... Here in this scripture, it says, don't be like people of the world. Don't be like that. Let God change you. And so it, it has to be a different thought process. I mean, it's more than just saying, yes, this is what I am. I serve God and I've given my life to God and I'm going to heaven and my family's going to heaven and that's what it is. But if there's no thought process change, is there really any change at all? I remember in Dell City, um, I was there one day. We, my wife and I had moved into our new apartment, 725 square feet upstairs in the dumpiest little Dell City apartment complex you could be in. We were, we were proud of it. We had went out and, and uh, our parents, I think, had bought us a new uh, couch to put in there and we, we had put a bedroom set, and we had a little dinette table there, and it was ours. And, you know, I love God. She loves God. Everybody's changed. Everything is great. But really, there wasn't a lot of change in my life. I had read the scriptures. I had 
known the Word of God enough that I could, I could and I had been asked several times to speak to large groups of young people and, and, and lead worship and do all of those different things. But I remember being in that apartment complex, in the apartment complex, in the apartment one day, and I had such anger issues that it was to the point that I really, I couldn't control myself. He said, well, hey, you, hey you, you probably should tell these stories about it. You know that people are going to talk about it now. I'm fine with that. Because I, I feel like today I can stand up and say I'm changed. And I, I don't do this anymore. You know, this has not happened in my home. And so don't judge me for it necessarily. I'm telling you my life so that you can see that the thinking in our lives have to change. Because I'm worried today that if we don't change our thinking, that we might be going down the wrong path. And it might get our families, it, it might get our friendships in a lot of trouble. I remember my wife was in the bedroom. I don't know what she had done, but whatever it has, she had done had ticked me off. It didn't take a lot to do that. It was a short fuse, and I would light it most of the time myself. And so, all of a sudden, she's saying something, I'm saying something, I get mad, and I remember picking up a chair that was in the, in the bedroom, and there was a plate glass window that was, it was two-story, remember? And it was huge, it was like seven, seven foot wide. And my wife, I don't know where she was standing. I, don't, I didn't have any regard for her whatsoever. But I remember picking up that chair, and I was screaming, and I just threw it. And it barely missed the plate glass window. That moment I realized, I'm out of control. And my wife, which I'd been married to for not very long, Jennifer, you know, I'm telling you, we talked about it here a few weeks ago. I might not be very romantic or all of those things, you know, but for some reason, somehow, I got her to marry me, you know? And she hadn't seen this side because this side isn't the side that you show people, remember? You don't show this side. You dress up nice, you know, you take a shower, you always smell clean, all that. But then you get two or three weeks into marriage, and then you wake up and you're saying, man, you've got nasty breath. I don't remember, I don't remember like smelling this when I kissed you before, you know? I mean, so things start to change and you start, you start to realize who somebody really is. That's not what she signed up for. I, I, I know she thought in her mind, he has given his life over to God. He has, he has told people that he's going to, he's going to be in the ministry. I mean, what higher calling can there be? And he goes and he he stands in front of all these different people and he talks about God and how he can change and all these things he can do. And then he throws a chair almost through a plate glass window? That's not what I signed up for. I'm sure that's what was going through her mind. And at some point in your life, we have to decide, are the things that we're doing the things of God or this the, the reactions of us? Do we really think that our lives are truly changed or do we just say that they are so that we feel better about ourselves? I got to bring it up because it, it just was such an issue yesterday. We're at a basketball game and I'm watching a guy coach and he's, he's coaching third grade boys and we're waiting for our basketball game to start. And he's a little vocal. You know, coaches, I, I don't mind coaches being intense. I, d I mean, I don't. I understand that. And I don't, I don't mind motivational speeches. I don't mind that at all. But, but this guy was screaming at his team. And then they had call a timeout or it was halftime or it was something. And he goes to this boy and he's like this far in front of his face. And he screams out these words to him that I thought they were something else and then somebody told me that that's not exactly what he said. But I mean just screaming, mad, angry, upset, disappointed in this kid. 
so much that the people around, they were like, somebody's got to do something about this. Somebody's got to get up. Somebody's got to, somebody's got to stop this guy. He is out of control. If anybody needed change, it was definitely this coach. Because he, he was treating this kid like he was nothing. Devastating him. Probably doesn't want to play basketball anymore because if you've got to play for a coach like that, then, you know, why go out there and get screamed at and yelled at and abused? And that's what it was. It was abuse. And so somebody finally says, well, that was, I think that was his son. And then, you, then your heart really drops because you think, he's got to go home with that guy. You know? And he, it's, it's not just I'm disappointed in you for not catching the basketball. I'm not just disappointed in you for loafing is what he said. And, I, and here, I, I just want to, can I just be mean for just a second? You know, can I just be not politically correct? You know, I'm, I'm just like, you know, hey, you know, Chubby, you know, you, you get up and run up and down the court like that. And see, let's talk about loafing about you. You know, you don't sit there and scream at that kid. There's got to be some change. But let me, let, me, let me stop here for just a second. I, I think we've got to analyze our lives because of this reason. There are so many situations and there's so many areas of our lives that we personally need to check. Because we say we're changed too, right? We say that if people would come up and they're going to look at us and they're going to observe what we are, we are examples of Christ. We, we are transformed by the renewing, by the changing of our mind. And I know that we have these fleshly desires, and I know that we're going to mess up at times, and I know that it's not always going to be right. But for goodness sakes, this morning, let's be changed. Let's check ourselves this morning. Let's not leave here this morning unchanged. We expect so much out of our kids. So much out of our kids. We expect more out of our kids sometimes than even what we can do. We have high expectations. We want them to excel. Do not come home with a B. If you come home with a B, it means that you didn't study hard. If you come home with a B, it means that for some reason you were not listening. If you come home with a B, you will be grounded. That's how it is, right? And they're saying, I've worked my tail off. I have tried as hard. The teacher is not, you know, and, and here I do. I come home with a disappear. Disappear. <laughs> come home with a B. I come home with a B, and then my parents are disappointed in me. How do you think Christ would embrace someone that, came home that was disappointed as well in what they've done. Do you think that he would look at them and he would say, I'm so disappointed in you that no longer you will be cut off from the world and you will go to your room and you will, you know, all that. And we expect all of this from our kids. We expect them to, to excel in sports. We expect for them to excel in band. We expect for them to excel in every area to this high, high, high level that you and I both cannot achieve ourselves. So, I know, I'm on a soapbox this morning. Forgive me. But here's what I'm saying. There's got to be some type of thinking change in our life that compassion and love and those type of Christ-like things will flow out of our lives. If they miss a pass on the football field, it was just a pass. If they miss a shot on the basketball court, it was just a shot. If they miss the note on the trumpet in the middle of their solo in band at the basketball game, it's not the end of the world. But I'll tell you what is. It's when they, tell, when they see us say that we know who He is. When they, see, when they see us raise our hands in worship, when they see us praying to Him, and then all of a sudden we are not the same person that we say we are. 
It was drastic when I picked up the chair and threw it. It was over the top when I picked up the chair and threw it, through the, threw, threw it towards the window. But is it not over the top as well when we take those people around us and we tell them that we're changed and we don't show that in our actions? For goodness sakes, let's embrace somebody. Let's, let's for, one, for one moment, let it be okay that people fail. For one moment, let's, let's take, and take a hand down and lift somebody up to where we're at instead of keep kicking them down and down and down where we want them to be so that we can be just a little bit higher than them. You know, you've said it. It's because I'm dad, that's why. <laughs> well, that's a great explanation. You know, I've used that finger and I've used that phrase. Instead of explaining to them why I want them to be that way, or instead of being the example that I needed to be so that they would be that way in the first place. I'm telling you today, as a church, as a society, as parents, as friends, as Christians, as people that, that walk out into the community, we've got to get this right today. It can't just be faked. It, it just can't be, it can't be one of those things that, that we nonchalantly say it's okay. We've got to be changed, and we've got to be changed completely. And the only way that can take place and happen is if our minds change toward God. You have to find that out for yourself. You have to seek that out for yourself. You can't come to this place and expect me or somebody else just to tell you a few words and then you automatically your, your demeanor, your mind, everything is totally different about you. We have to seek out God on our own. You have to seek your own salvation out. But if you're not careful... If you're not careful today, you, like me, for a long time was deceived, thinking that I was something I truly was not. There's a man in John chapter 9, and Jesus is walking along, and he saw this blind man, and the, and the rabbi, his disciples asked him, he said, why is this man blind? Is it because of his own sin, or is it because of his parents' sin? And he, and he said, he told them, it's not, it's not either one. But he's blind so that he can bring me glory. And I read that scripture and I, I started to have a little bit of a problem with it. Because, you know, I, it's nothing that necessarily he did. It's just the condition that he's in. But in that, God can receive glory from it. And so you continue to read in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 11, and, and what he does is he goes and he spits in the, in, in the dirt. And I just want you to cap capture this picture real quick. Jesus kneels down and he spits in the dirt. And he, and he takes it and he begins to rub that around and, and he makes a mud, like a paste. And all of a sudden, he goes to this man that is blind and has been blind all of his life. And he just begins to rub that on his, on his eyes. He said, really, what is that, that going to do? And Jesus tells him, he says, now I want you to go to the pool of Siloam. And I want, you to, I want you to bathe there. I want you to wash that mud off. I want you to to remove it from your eyes. And they said when he did that, that when his eyes came open, he was able to see once again. He was changed. Something that obviously couldn't happen before, now has happened because, because Jesus has actually touched him and things are changed. Sometimes in our lives, it's not necessarily things that we've even done. It could be the influences of others. It wasn't, it wasn't this man's sin. It wasn't his parents' sin that kept him from being able to see. But it was just the circumstances that he was in. And sometimes we, we, we think about ourselves and you know, we say, God, why have you put this on me? Or God, why am I going through that? Or God, 
Why? 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 You know, it might not be about you. Have we ever thought about that? Why am I sick, God? Why, why, why is it that we're always broke, God? Why is it that, that my family has, has left me, God? Why am I all alone, God? It might not be about us. It might be like this, this man that is blind and he says, the reason that he's blind is not because of his mom and dad. It's not because of his sin. It's because I'm going to receive glory from him. You say, well, that sounds like a selfish God. I mean, really, this, this, this man's blind. He goes through all of this stuff. For what reason? So that he could be changed. So that he knows how it feels to be one way. But when Jesus comes on the scene and rubs something across his eyes, and he goes and he washes it off and he can be able to see, he's truly and totally Change so much that he begins to run through the city, run through the town. He starts to tell people. They didn't even recognize him. Is that the guy that was blind that used to be down on the corner? And is that that guy? No, that couldn't be that guy. It is. It's, it's that guy. He's changed. He's totally and completely changed. He, he doesn't look the same. He's not acting the same. He is changed. When you allow God to come into your life, and put action into it. When he's able to come in and he's able to touch those areas that you are weak in, he, in those areas, will make you strong. And he'll help you deal with those. You don't get over anger issues in a night. You don't get over anger issues when your wife tells you, if you do that again, I won't be with you for very much longer. It doesn't, it doesn't change overnight, right? It takes some time. It's a process. God wants to come in and start working in your life, in your family's life, so that you can be different. And then there's got to be a little bit of action from you. Where you dig in deep and you try to find out really who God is and what He is and what He means. There has to be a passion and a desire there. And when you do that, when you find that, I'm changed. I'm changed. I'm not the same guy that would throw the chair. If that coach, for a moment, would grab hold of God that was screaming at his son's face, he could be changed. Where he could control. Where he could love. Where he could be proud of. Where his son would grow up and have a healthy relationship with his son. We could change where our wants and desires and our expectations can be those that are healthy and not over the top. We could be changed today that when we walk into our jobs and, and there's people that we don't like and that have done us wrong, that we show a lot more love to those people than we ever do just talking bad about them. Because we're changed. If you today say that you have a relationship with God. I want you to be changed. Don't just say it. Don't, don't just say it. Don't just say it. Because when you just say it, words are cheap. Words don't mean anything. It's the action behind them that makes them true. I'm sorry today, God. I'm sorry. Because there's a lot of times in my life that I have failed. That I have said I've known you. And that I represent you. And there really hadn't been change. I'm sorry today, God, that I let little things on the side creep in. 
and make me different than what I truly want to be. Is that your prayer today? Is that what you're saying in your mind? I want to be different than how I am right now. I'm not talking about salvation this morning. I'm not. If you don't know Him and you want to start a relationship, today's the day to do that. You can change that way as well. But today, really what I'm talking about is us that have called Him Lord. Us that, that worship Him and raise our hands. And then we just act like we don't even know Him. He's our God today. He is our lifeline today. He is our everything. He is our all in all. He is the same yesterday and today, and He'll be the same tomorrow. He is our eternal life. He is the one that we get to go see face to face after this life. And I want Him to be able to say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. I do not want to hear the words. He never changed. You kept telling me over and over and over you would. You kept making deals with me over and over. You kept saying you were sorry over and over and over. And my grace is sufficient. But your lifestyle wasn't. So just depart. I, I don't know who you are. I don't want to hear those words. I did not want to hear those words. So here's what God wants from you this morning. There's a lot of us in this room that this will apply to. And I'll just tell you that I'll be the first. If you just say to God this morning, I need change in my life. 